So I, I, um, I found the film interesting for several aspects. Um, well, because one uh, is that it show uh, the urge to see the nice idea or an image that is in your head. Um, but not only, what's really fascinating me, or fascinating me is the, the energy and the power with which uh, it is done. Uh, and I think uh, this is something uh, I'm busy with uh, in my work. Um, so um, I see the act of making the act of making indirect link uh, to the work. Uh, one could say it's a, a way or a, um, a wish to incorporate a performance uh, or the performing act in the work. Uh, in the work, so this uh, this is a photograph. It's yeah, my, my hand. The end of the art is uh, with at the beginning of the at the start of making. Um, this sculpture was actually fired on the location um, during a, a opening performance, uh, the last of the day, and. Um, so the, the girls in the red overalls were taking care of um, firing, keep on uh, adding wood to the fire, uh, keeping the fire at the same strength. Um, in this case, fire is not a, constru a destructive uh, element, but it's a constructive element um, because uh, clay uh, actually turns into ceramic when it gets fired. And yes, um, this hilly landscape is uh, due to the location, which is uh, Fort uh, Rautenhoek, in close to Utrecht. And uh, this was part of an exhibition um, called Cab, curated by uh, Mark Kramer at the time. So you see on each hill uh, one of these fires. And then later on, uh, later on the pieces uh, have been left shot in the ashes. Uh, <coughs> I'm not sure uh, all of you actually saw the Close Encounters movie, <laughs> but uh, another important element of the film is uh, that it shows several people who are busy with the representation of this mountain. Um, and this is also something that uh, happens when you are an artist, you're working with other people, and you're picking up things in the air, or uh, you're uh, working on similar subjects, uh, developing maybe a different aspect of it. Um, and one of the subjects uh, I am interested in is um, yeah, the language of yeah, uh, In this picture, uh, you can see, let's say, um, a word or a text being visualized. And in this one, let's say as well, uh, it's like uh, if those shells could be a language, like uh, an alphabet that is readable, it's a readable text. Um, but then, yeah. um, actually, uh, this work is um, a part of a series of pictures um, in which I'm playing, uh, as I told before, with the notion of performance. Uh, so you can see those images as a sort of documentation rather than, uh, let's say, staged pictures. And then I'd like to say something more about uh, the sculptures or how I made those sculptures um, that you saw before. Um, so they are like combinations of those mathematical formulas that you see not so well. <laughs> It's a bit, I don't know, it's very bright, uh, but okay. Um, those two are uh, mathematical equations that have a graphic representation in two dimensions, and by combining two or more of these equations, you can uh, achieve a three-dimensional, a three-dimensional shape. And. Um, so those, those are the studies for the sculptures you saw before. 
and yeah, it's a pity that you hear it so quite bleached. Um, but those series of drawings were also, uh, in addition, uh, published by a small printing or publishing house and bookstore in Rotterdam called Print Room. And they are reads of prints. You can see them. Um, so what I did was also to use the backgrounds that you have <laughs> see here uh, by combining combining the two color backgrounds and achieving the third uh, color background there and the same with the two colors uh, of the two the big dimensional uh, shapes. So they are overlapping in the three dimensional shape. So let's say I didn't know what I would achieve by combining two shapes. So the, the, let's say the three dimensional shape is uh, only um, coming out after I've been working, I've been working them all together. Actually, how I do it is with a mathematical program called MATLAB, and they, um, for the mathematical program, this is in fact a, a program in itself. So you uh, put in the math mathematic uh, equations, and together uh, they they develop this program. And you see the names underneath. So they are all uh, they are all. Uh, equation from the mathematician studied those equation in the 16th, 17th, 19th century. And um, um, yes, the titles are given, given by those mathematicians. So the names are, uh, you know, that you see underneath, Pascal, Bernoulli, um, they are all uh, the mathematician who studied. Those. How do you choose those combinations? How do you put them together first two? Um, How do you match yes, them? Yes, just randomly. Sorry. Randomly I choose two shapes and then I I see what I can achieve. Mm -hmm. And but uh, at the same time it's some sort of a, a language in the sense that uh, you know so these mathematical uh, equations are informing the form and uh, you can also see it uh, the other way around. Uh, a shape uh, like this one can be deconstructed, and you can just obtain the circle and the line. Um, so I made a sort of uh, an alphabet in the sense that it's an index of these mathematical formulas, and I use them, uh, yeah, to study, to study. Things and or to generate new shapes, like in this case, um, yes. So this was an installation that I showed in Milan. In fact, um, those those pieces they could be three D printed in the sense that I have a three dimensional file, uh, but those are uh, end modeled. Yeah, um, and this is because I actually find it interesting. Uh, I think the lively, the liveliness of a piece is uh, in the little mistake and in the energy that the artist puts in the work. Um, and also, what what I find, for instance, interesting is that uh, identical twins they should be perfectly identical since the information uh, that they have it's from the same DNA, but they never are. This piece, on the other hand, is 3D printed uh, in ceramic, and um, uh, it comes from the series of uh, photographs I showed before with the hand and the clay. Um, yes, um, what I did after taking this photograph, uh, I had this laser 3D scanned, and uh, with this 3D file, I had uh, yeah, uh, had a piece printed, which wasn't entirely easy since there wasn't such a printer um, uh, existing yet. But with the help of this uh, student from the Design Academy in Eindhoven, we actually uh, created a printer. He created a printer uh, that uh, could print these hands because they are actually separated and they are uh, live um, 
size. So they had to be upscaled 15% for firing the dish rings and then, uh, yeah. Um, yes, and uh, this is, um, I wanted to bring back uh, the hand and let's say the lamp of clay, uh, it's uh, I think a sort of starting point uh, for a sculpture, if the sculpture will be actually handmade. Um, so I call it point like uh, zero, but in this case, of course, the hands uh, uh, yeah, are brought back in a working pro, pro um, in a working process where the hands have lost their meaning. And this this um, this sculpture was in show in a, an exhibition about 3D printed ceramic or the state of 3D printed ceramic in uh, San Francisco this winter. Uh, the design is in. And I had made a piece, or actually a few pieces before, about um, yes, this sort of shapeless shape or a shape that is taking shape <laughs> before. Uh, this is actually a video, uh, but I will show just a few, uh, few uh, skills. Actually, this is not a video, this is a, just a work, a work in progress, uh, or let's say a making of picture. And I show it because then you understand how that piece is made. Um, if a person would go at uh, two meters uh, below the water, um, it could only produce a very small size bubble. But if you go at 20 meters and you breathe uh, compressed air, sorry, um, then you can. Uh, Excel a, a really large size uh, bubble, and uh, yes. Yeah, so with each breath, I created a different shape, and there were all kind of abstract shapes. And this is a bit cinematographic, <laughs> <laughs> but of course, yeah, it's playing. You know. Um, Again, with performance. Everything is very cinematographic. I mean, you just show me a, 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 a 3D, I mean, the same process that you use, uh, even a picture of your hands, then you make your hands. Yeah. Uh, technically, it's, it's cinema is it's the other way around. Yes. The cinema takes something two dimensional and makes it bi dimensional. So you've done the opposite That's process, but it is the process of filmmaking. Yes. And uh, yes, here, so the artist is taken by an abstract shape. Yeah. And back to the hands, and this is a series of pictures with um, hands and uh, nature, nature shapes, natural, like, uh, let's say, yeah, natural shape. Yeah. Yes. And this instead of back to my pictures, um, photo a series of photograph uh, where I'm uh, using flowers, replacing dots of mathematical equations. And I started this piece actually in, in New York last year when I was doing uh, uh, my residency at the ICP because the light was so bright, I could, uh, you know, could create those really contrasted pictures. Um, Yes, I think um, <coughs> I think early uh, early early natural forms um, have this very strong mathematical uh, structure that informs them, like shells and starfish, and also flowers and plants. change a little bit, um, I thought I'd show an assignment. Um, so you see another skill, the work I 
made in another scale. Um, this is in front of uh, the Bonafante in uh, Rotterdam, in uh, Basque. And yes, this is a making of picture, or like I would say, during construction, just to show the size of it. And actually, uh, these were the small stars, and up high, uh, the stars are way bigger, and they move with the wind. And this piece I made um, um, two years ago during a residency at the uh, Museum uh, Zauli in Faenza. And um, uh, yes, Faenza um, is, uh, is maybe the oldest cities in Europe um, where ceramic works were used. In fact, in French, um, and say also a group of ceramic works of violence. Um, and uh, so in the city there are several institutions dedicated to uh, ceramic and several laboratories. I say this because I see there are some students interested in ceramic. And um, um, those are uh, wa uh, watermelon, we realize in uh, ceramic. And let's see, here a detail. Um, well, I want to dedicate a piece to uh, the shape of uh, the ellipsoid uh, that is generated by two ellipses. So two ellipses, uh, yes, so you say, crossed, they create the shape, and the shape of the watermelon. Um, and I dedicated actually uh, to this shape several other pieces. Um, then what I found funny was that um, during, uh, during my residency, I realized that uh, the most distributed uh, watermelon in Italy is the watermelon called of Faenza, and that outside Faenza there were fields and fields of watermelon, some sort of synchronicity. about this uh, concept that is following your work since a long time, the virtual, and there's a way this absence, this absence of a kind of uh, reality where your body is a kind of pose. At uh, the same time, these formulas they are just going away, they are not fixed. And what is interesting that you since many years, uh, you have a kind of alter ego, that you were called Dorit. 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 Maybe one can consider it an alter ego, but it's just it's just me. It's just me acting, uh, undertaking an act. Yeah, and then I had to give a title to this uh, series of pictures. And then I called it Dorian. So it's not really an alter ego. I mean, no. Yeah, it's a best kind of character. Um, I rather say it is just. Uh, I rather like the idea that it is a documentation of an act that I, I undertake. Um, so, and that's why I say, yeah, I like to consider the sea my studio. You know, and, uh, and go there and, and yeah, do something and then get it photographed or video. Yeah. It was in the Red Sea, are you ready to do this? Yes, this, this was at the Red Sea, but I've been working also uh, in Mexico, in the, uh, at the sea there. Um, yeah, for several reasons, just um, here it's not visible, <laughs> there is no visibility, so you couldn't possibly work here. But isn't the sea the place where automatic corporations don't work? They, they come from, and that's what I, I said before. I mean, we all come from, uh, from the sea, of course, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I think, um, okay, so if you go in the universe, everything is uh, more and more, you know, mathematical or like, uh, 
got more and more complex. Our mathematics got more and more complex. Our information, the, the mathematics that inform us, inform our shape, our form, is uh, got increasing, increasingly complex. Um, but let's say this universe or this uh, everything uh, is, according to me, uh, an information system. So it's about communication and it's about uh, uh, yeah, creating this. Ah, <laughs> but it's interesting that. Uh, that we started from Spielberg. Do you need, do you need the microphone yes, for me as well? Yes. It's interesting that you started from Spielberg. And uh, in a way, I see, uh, uh, I understand that you see this uh, process of creation, the urge to create something. And, and you saw that in a film that is not about art in no. itself, but it's about receiving. A colleague, a colleague from the universe. But it is the same. Ah. <laughs> well, talk about that. <laughs> That's exactly the point. I this think. is also what I said. I mean, uh, you're working uh, with other artists, and you uh, realize you pick up the same, the same kind of uh, interest, mm. the same kind of you know subjects. Um, I don't know, recently you had a, a, a show about um, also an artist who worked with uh, um, language right? in a completely different way. Yeah, like a Michael Dean. <coughs> so it's interesting how, uh, you know, there are many artists that uh, can work on it on a subject in so, such a completely different uh, way. So you would say sort of a union collective soul? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you came way later. <laughs> <laughs> later in the universe for sure. <laughs> I don't know if I am into Jung, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I uh, um, let's say maybe before Jung there was the Akashic field, which is an information source according, according to uh, yeah. Let's not go there. Okay. <laughs> um, About these uh, primordial elements, no? they are kind of decoding, or or is the opposite? Uh, is, is that uh, to make some signs or some symbols, some formulas that are, in a way, hiding something, so making a kind of inverse process of explaining and creating a kind of uh, mysterious uh, deepness of something. And that is also maybe this thing with Spielberg. That is, you know, maybe we know one. Some parts, but the, the ends or the where it's going is a kind of uh, uh, hidden part. And I think that this is kind of shaping some forms in a certain way, this kind of uh, yeah, parallel thing, parallel uh, dimension. Wow, this were many subjects. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess it's just a, a way to discover to discover all that. You know? We are here to discover what's happening, what we are, what uh, what's what are we perceiving? Why do we see this way when we could see it so many other ways? Because as uh, um, Einstein said, energy is equal matter. So we could also, uh, if we would have other eyes, see, or like another functional thing, see energy instead of matter. Because, um, but so it's not, uh, 
to make anything into anything. It's just it's very, very disturbing to see the energy. <laughs> it's just to, uh, to um, yeah, uh, like um, do research on what is interesting or interests me. <laughs> Going back to those encounters, which I have not seen since I saw it that time, no, I saw it many times. And uh, <laughs> tonight I watched that scene and I realized uh, that there is this whole commentary around it. And, uh, and I realized that maybe it was autobiographical for Spielberg. But Spielberg also came from that sort of American suburbia, uh, the, the white picket fence. Uh, uh, little garden, and, uh, and, and, me, and so maybe he saw himself as a sort of uh, a, a bit like the current Ripple's encounters, so that you have this calling of making something, of going somewhere else, and, and sort of you know, perceive the different wavelength. And, um, and I wonder though, and this is the big question, if, if um, uh, what, do the, what do the people around around him, you know, his case, the family and, and neighbors, do they make the artist lonely? And uh, they make the artist as you know, a bit of an outcast in society, you know, because you are receiving a different message from the energy of the universe. And, uh, it's incredible that, that very subtle line of dialogue where he tells his wife, are you crazy? You know, in the car and not even uh, fully dressed. And you just be you know, destroying the whole neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so in the end, our artists lonely people. Oh, uh, no, not at all. <laughs> No, not at all. Uh, I mean, everybody receives another call and um, or perceive things differently. Uh, and artists, um, I don't know. Actually, at the moment, there are so many. <laughs> but you don't feel lonely at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, you feel more like working together with. Uh, yeah. Even if you are aware of the fact that uh, it can be, uh, yeah, even similar subject can uh, be um, under like uh, uh, developed or like uh, researched or um, you know realized in so many different ways. Uh, no, it's very fascinating. It's like any other research, you know, mm -hmm. like if you are a scientist. You're also working with other sciences, and you have to uh, look what kind of discoveries they're making. Uh, I guess. Also, a bit about the. Uh, I was thinking about the fact that most of the time, mathematicians, mathematicians in, in film, I, I have to say, I don't think I ever met. Uh, Real life mathematician, and all this still around, but maybe they invented everything, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as I said, this is Stephen Hawking, some mathematician. Yes, it's that. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, anyway. Anyway, they are described as, as incredibly obsessive people. The mathematician is always the one that has this mind that goes much, 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 much faster. And uh, pretty much like the, the, that urge in uh, of the character of Close Encounter, and pretty much like the urge of the artist, so to speak, uh, which was the only connection I could make between two things that to me seemed a bit apart in your work in the beginning. One is this uh, freedom of creativity, of uh, shape, and you know, your hand. And the clay, you know, so something very, uh, uh, very open in a way, you know, very, and 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 the mathematical formula, 
are something that are sort of like the laws by which we measure our lives. But I think that the connection is that they both come from a struggle and they both come from an urge of saying, this is the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I can express it with a you know, handful of clay or I can express it with a you know, on chalkboard writing you know, the equation that finally will solve is uh, yeah, a possible way to think so. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, what to add? Um, uh, I don't know how much sense we have in this session, but uh, there was, uh, I think a few months ago, a year ago, I was this uh, news very interesting at the CERN in Switzerland. We are putting online a lot of tools they produce in the past decades, and they were actually uh, asking the people who were working there at the time if they remember what was the function of these tools, because they had it there in a storage, but they lost completely the the memory. Uh, the memory, but also the function of of these uh, these tools, which are well, by the way, very beautiful designs. Yeah. And then what I was thinking is interesting how you know, these tools that are worth like medium to measure or to, to uh, create kind of language, but it's more than language, because language of course is a kind of communication and also to go, also to refer to the Spielberg movie, this form of course is a medium, no? Because it's a tool to understand something, a place, you know, where it's happening, something or there, the place of communication. And it's interesting how a form or a shape is uh, is actually in between something that is uh, in a, is a, um, the, the the function the function of, of this form is is a kind of relative uh, short time of existence. And then you have these shapes, you have these forms, you have these kind of uh, uh, elements of forgotten languages, of forgotten functions. I was thinking maybe in your world there are these kind of elements that maybe there is a kind of uh, reference to. Uh, to uh, models or to formulas uh, that are still in use, but some of them maybe they are uh, they were used before, or they are, and, and the functions are really open to a lot of different things. But maybe also no, they will be a forgotten function. <laughs> yes. I don't know if they ever had a function. <laughs> it is just um, that uh, I was fascinated uh, in finding out uh, how things are made and how you know other things can be made. So they are all part of this world. They are all um, they are all forms that can exist within those rules. And, uh, yeah, so those are the are the shapes I'm working on. I think. Um, yeah. Probably they're going to be forgotten <laughs> or have no use. <laughs> but uh, <coughs> um, or maybe not. Maybe maybe there will be more interest uh, for. Um, communication and for understanding uh, more interest uh, for science and for uh, uh, yeah, mathematics and those shapes uh, uh, will stay. Maybe there are some planets, maybe there are some planets in the universe. Why are they still using that? Yeah, or maybe they even exist as uh, uh, beings. Yeah. <laughs> You'll uh, see them. A planet inhabited by... By the sculptures. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? There are night nautiluses here, and, uh, or like uh, shapes that are not so very far from them. 
I fly from that, so many times. No, I, 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 <laughs> So the, we are stuck in the middle of Spielberg, but uh, Lebanon Rouge, yeah. Yeah. which is um, a beautiful, a beautiful film. It's also totally different from, from Spielberg. Yes. Yes, and as I said, um, I thought it was the, a bit about inspiration. How all these things are kind of turning on these balloons. <laughs> and there is this sort of beautiful choreography and um, also some sort of mathematical, the kind of mathematical lines that these balloons are drawn. Mm -hmm. There's a reference to the by the way, because both the film at the end, there are people going up. <laughs> <laughs> so they are leaving the, the earth and they are just yes. going somewhere. But or living the dream in a way. They are living the dream. Of controlling, the dream. Of, controlling, <coughs> of controlling the matter. Yeah. Because to a vision you have in your mind, uh, that vision becomes reality and you get away from the plan. Yeah. Pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Anyone from the audience? Uh, up is Professor Plaza. Please. I was trying to Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Well, um, first of all, I must say that uh, yeah, I'm not afraid of it. I think that um, that is very important to keep the kind of child spirit, the playfulness, and uh, uh, for an artist is important because that is the reason to be an artist. You want to be in your studio to play with your, with your, uh, you know, with your research, with your materials, with your clay, and um, this is the only reason you want to do <laughs> to be an artist. You know, is to. Um, it's a, it's like it is like a game uh, to discover things a bit in a in a free. You have to have a free way to connect them, you know, um, uh, yeah, so in some way you can also say that people are stuck in different ages, I could be stuck at the age of six when I saw those movies and sort of, um, yeah, and it sort of, uh, yeah, made me think and, and you know, made, made me in some ways, uh, changed me and uh, made me realize, uh, yeah, this is definitely a fun life if you can, uh, if, yeah, if you can uh, look at things and look at them in different ways um, and uh, show, show this, this new way of looking at them. Uh, and this is typical of children also. Uh, later on, unfortunately, most of us get into a job and accept the things are uh, what they are labeled, but instead an artist, the idea is that you shouldn't look at the label, you look through the label. So, and that's, yeah, <coughs> that doesn't mean it's easy, <laughs> but, you know, for other people to, like, uh, yeah, then work with that, but, yeah, in a way I think you're right. But actually, Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah, this was the whole idea. I thought, uh, yeah, of course there are more interesting films, but I thought, uh, yeah, I choose only sort of formative films. Yes. Well, I'm not that ambitious. <laughs> But, uh, uh, no, I just like to show a uh, few moments, you know, 
few moments in my studio, which is the underwater, or few moments uh, of my, uh, let me say, uh, of my manipulation of clay, or few moments, I would say, you know, some of the, uh, yeah, some of the things I'm busy with, of course, I like to show them. But I don't expect the audience to be more involved than that. Yes. If, if they wish to, of course. No, I don't. Why is that? I don't know. I guess um, I like to focus on the, on the form, on the shape itself. And uh, I, I find the, fa the sound very <coughs> dominating. I mean, of course, it is a, like a, a stronger art, a stronger uh, art than a visual, than a visual art. It's so more involved. So if you are underwater, you don't have sound. <laughs> that's, 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 it's more yeah, that is a good excuse. But I, yeah, I think um, yeah, I think it involves. Uh, more emotions and it takes away concentration from what I want to maybe show. Yeah, yeah, not necessarily. Uh, a lot of things are also just made in the studio, um, but yes, um, yeah, na nature is never in any city, so uh, and we have lost a bit the contact with what actually it is to be on the planet Earth. Earth. So sometimes I do try to um, get to a to a landscape where you actually can get in touch with, um, with what it is, but um, to be on the planet Earth. So yes, these many, many, many works are actually, actually done in other places. Yes, yes, it's true. Um, I didn't show any of that work. Um, um, yeah, there is something in me that is also interested in uh, uh, sociological, so we say, anthropological aspects. So in New York, I was fascinated uh, by how. Uh, no, also because before I did uh, a residency at the American Academy in Rome, and there I met some. Um, American, fourth generation of uh, New Yorkese, Italian Americans, always married to Italians, and um, speaking still Italian with this incredible accent. Um, no, English then with this incredible accent. Um, and uh, yes, and how they transformed into these strange, you know, unexisting Italians. And the ice cream that also transformed into this. Uh, soft ice cream, um, yeah, th that that's I made its connection and um, created a, a series of work around this uh, ice, this different shaped ice cream because uh, you can extrude the uh, ice cream uh, through different star shapes and you're obtaining different different shapes. But anyway, the transformation of the so the ice cream in Italy is just a ball, but there it's. <laughs> <laughs> This beautiful, almost uh, also sea-like yeah. shape. Thank you for the questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.